Lead by Me Sugar is one of the hardest songs to play on guitar. It consists out of several repeating rhythmical patterns which all derive from this very basic pattern. Two 32 notes followed by two 16th notes. On paper this seems quite simple, but at 150 BPM this lick becomes a nightmare for pretty much every guitar player. But why? Where is the actual problem and how can we fix it? So, here are the three fundamental technical mistakes players are doing trying to play this song and how to correct them. Problem number one. People are playing double downstrokes. So what does that mean? In the case of bleed, people would actually play down, up, down, 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 up, down, down. And in this case they would not only play double downstrokes but actually triple downstrokes. Those would be three downstrokes in a row. And this technique might work at slower tempos, but the faster we get, this is not maintainable at all. Performing three downstrokes in a row is just way too big of a motion, way too uneconomical to achieve higher speeds or endurance. And the solution to this is, actually play alternate picking throughout the whole sequence. So instead of playing down, up, down, down, you would play down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. Up, down, up, down, up. Playing that way might actually feel weird at the beginning, but this is no wonder as most guitar players focus way too much on their downstrokes and generally neglect their upstrokes. Plus, this technique is not only suited to bleed, but could and should be used as a general approach on these galloping style licks. For example, also on a song like Battery from Metallica. Mistake number two. People are playing from their elbows and forearms. Playing from the arm is a comparably large movement which is barely controllable. Sooner or later your pick will be all over the place and you will play unaccurate. Plus your body will actually try to create some control by tensing up the forearm which will heavily affect your endurance. So we need a smaller, more controllable movement that we can apply over a longer period of time. And the solution is, well, don't pick out of your arm, actually anchor your wrist on the bridge of your guitar and pick from the wrist, not the forearm. And now, mistake number three. Not having a straight picking movement or a straight picking path. What do I mean with that? A lot of people include rotational movements of the forearm into their picking. They bend their wrist and by rotating the forearm create a picking motion. This is a technique that you might have seen with players like for example Van Halen who used to do that tremolo picking on one string. And this can work very well as long as you play one unmuted note pretty fast. Now you could of course place your wrist on the bridge on the guitar and pick by rotating your forearm, but I found this movement to be way too complex and demanding on the muscles of your forearm. So at least I never got the speed and endurance and control out of this movement that I wanted.
So this might work for some players actually to some extent, but there's definitely a more efficient and more comfortable approach. And the solution is pick in a linear fashion, only up and down, don't use any rotation. This is of course easier said than done, but I have a trick for you that worked for me as well. Rotate your forearm in so that your palm is actually resting on the body of the guitar. And like this you now have sort of locked your wrist by having two contact points on the guitar. One being the bridge of the guitar and one above on the body of the guitar. And like this, it is impossible to include rotation of the forearm and wrist. And that basically leaves us with one linear picking motion. This now is a less complex movement, which will enable us to actually play more complex things. It might not feel less complex for you right now, but this is just because you're not used to it. And by the way, this is also how the Meshuggah guys are playing it. So give it a try. Now, I have created a whole lesson and play along workout where I cover all the different sections and the main picking sequences of Bleed. It includes taps, backing tracks and me playing along guiding you through the different stages from slow 65 BPM up to the original 115 BPM, giving comments and side notes on technique and all the particularities of the different sections. So right now I would love to invite you to the first section of my workout where I cover the main picking sequence of Bleed. So take your guitar and let's go. And by the way, you don't necessarily need an 8-string guitar to play the song. Actually, only few notes are really played that low. Most of the song is played on the low E string. So grab your 7-string or 6-string and let's go. Rhythm number 1, 65 BPM. Put your wrist on the bridge of your guitar. Rotate your forearm and wrist in so that the palm of your hand is touching the guitar. Like that you have now locked your wrist and your picking motion should be linear. No rotation anymore, just up and down. Pick from the wrist and do alternate picking. So the last stroke of this four note sequence is a up stroke. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. If you like the little insight, you can get full access to the whole workout on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash davidschneiderguitar. Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr